All right, guys, I've been in the RC car room for the last couple of days, just looking through everything, trying to figure out, you know, what I need, you know, getting stuff current. Like I said, I just picked up the MP10 TKI3, the nitro car, and I picked up the MP10E TKI2. So just trying to get all the chassis current and find out what I need so we can actually start doing some running. And I started building, like I said, I already have the TKI3, the nitro car, pretty much all together. I'll let you guys see that on another video. But right now I'm in the middle of building the MP10E TKI2. And I just started, you know, opening everything and going through the instructions. And the first thing you come to is your differentials. So I figured I would take the time and just show you guys how I build my differentials one more time. And as I'm building the kit, I'll show you guys some more stuff. But in this video, we're going to cover differentials. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm pretty sure I've already done a video on differentials. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have though. Um, I'm gonna try to go into a little bit more of a detail on, you know, how I build my differentials and why I do the stuff that I do and all that good stuff. All right, but I like to start out with like a clean area, which I don't have at the moment because I just got done building the TKI3. So it's a little bit of a mess, but I'm trying to get the stuff knocked out. I just wanna go through and get it done <laughs> so I can start running again. But you want to start out with a clean surface or a clean area if you can not clutter with everything and just lay everything out as you guys can tell i do not have that at the moment i have stuff everywhere but you want to get everything laid out eh, like i said this is not a good example but like i said we're in a hurry and like i said i have this piece of glass and this sandpaper it's just a thousand you can probably use something a little coarser but i i don't know I'd rather take my time and not take away too much material because if you destroy your case, that's not gonna be a good day, I promise you. So, take a little bit of WD-40. To me, the WD-40 is really just there to uh, stop the sandpaper from getting built up with plastic. So, just put a little bit on there. And what we're gonna do is take the case and just kind of swirl it around. And what you're trying to do, I don't know if this is gonna pick it up, but you see like these little little molding marks whatever really all you need to do is just knock those down but I kind of go until this is like really smooth so let me show you the process real quick all right I hope this is a good angle so you guys can really see but like I said the glass is really just to keep the sandpaper flat you don't want to like sand on an uneven surface because it can mess up you know how the case is whatever so you need a piece of glass or a piece of metal something flat and something smooth like I said, you could even use your, your old lady's glass top stove, but I wouldn't I wouldn't let her catch you doing that. You know, she's not gonna understand you like remixing with a little piece of plastic on top of her glass top stove, I'm sure. But just spray a little bit of lubricant. My side's always use WD-40 because I always have it. Kind of run it around a little bit. And I try to stay in like a little circular pattern, but you can kind of go just up and down, rotate it up and down just whatever makes it easier on you you don't have to do like any particular thing you just kind of want to do it as evenly as possible like just don't bear down on like one corner and like sand so try to keep even pressure so that's kind of used four fingers and keep even pressure i'll go one direction then i'll go back counterclockwise clockwise now turn the case. Like I said, your goal is just to kind of get this flat and even. And I always keep, what you want to do, you want to make sure that you're not digging into a corner either. Sometimes you'll feel it like trying to drag on a corner definitely don't want to do that so just make sure you keep good pressure so it stays flat like it just done right there <laughs> just just try to keep it flat against the glass turn that's definitely what you don't want it to do <laughs> so you got a little bit more wd down here you don't want to dig in because like i said it's going to chew up your corner so 
don't put too much pressure be in a hurry like me and if you take your fingers and you spread the sandpaper out and press down on it it'd be a little bit better just take your time pay attention to what you're doing And keep it like a microfiber on your leg and every once in a while you can take and just kind of wipe the part off and you can kind of take a look at it I don't know if you guys gonna be able to see it but we're starting to come it's starting to be a little bit cleaner but you can still see a little bit of the the casting mark right there so you guys can see that but that's all we're trying to do is just get rid of all of that stuff so I'm not going to bore you guys with the rest of this, so let me go ahead and get this knocked out real quick. All right, I hope you guys had a, a good view of that. I don't think y'all really did, so I had to adjust a little bit for the time lapse. But, um, like I said, that's pretty much the gist of it. Like I said, just keep something like a microfiber on your leg so you can kind of just wipe it every once in a while. Or if you're an old roughneck like me, you can just take it against your shirt like that and be done with it. So, but I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. Like the, this is really smooth. Nice. I'm really hoping you guys can see the difference in these. Um, it's hard to tell on this little GoPro, but you can see like just the, the bit of difference. You can kind of see some low spots still around like the edge where it's molded, but it is a way way flatter surface i hope this is coming out for you guys the reason behind doing this or like my theory behind doing this whatever it's just giving you a flatter surface to seal to if you've ever had your differentials leaking it absolutely drives me crazy and like i said you can use like some little little bit of rtv or something on there but it just makes a mess and makes it a headache next time you want to go service your differential so that's just why i do that and also it also just helps it actually sit flush against your gears so yeah it does it it's a little bit of effort like i said um you can be scrubbing for a second but it's i think it's worth it it just it makes it look a whole lot better and it just gives you a much much cleaner surface so you know that like all these little you know, it's just it's rough so yeah that's it just smooths it out guys that's it <laughs> but yeah all right so once you get all three differentials done your arm's going to be pretty wiped but just hang in there this is going to be worth it put in the time now you have a better car at the end you know your end result will be better so it's worth the effort so i'm going to knock out the other the other two housings and we'll get these things built so let me get to it All right, now that you have all three of your casings sanded, smooth, whatever, and cleaned, I just wipe stuff down. Like I said, I, don't, I, I have, I go through pit phases, whatever you wanna call it. Like sometimes I'll be like really OCD about cleaning every little part, and sometimes I'm like whatever. I don't really think, it depends on the kit maybe. The Kyosho stuff seems to be pretty clean. Like you can get like some parts clean or something and wipe it, and you won't get much dirt, if any. But now that you've went through all the headache of sanding those casings, the, the diff casings down, now you gotta do all the gears. Yeah, bad news. <laughs> I don't really go too extremely crazy with these. Like I don't try to get rid of that little, let me just show you guys real quick. Uh, it's probably gonna be too shiny for you to see, but you can kind of see like the little casting marks, the little circles, just like in the diff. I don't go crazy with these guys. I just try to knock down any rough edges, which with these, they're kind of, I guess because it's, you know, it's a metal, it actually tells you when it's smooth. You'll hear it, the sandpaper. So let me go ahead and knock one out and just show you guys. Yeah, guys, the gears go kind of quick because you're not trying to take a lot of material off. You're just trying to smooth everything out. But it makes life easy if you go ahead and put all the gears up top of your sandpaper. And as you do one, you can just slide it off on the glass and pull another one down. So. Throw that bad boy down and just put my finger like right in the center of them because you got the hole for the the out drives and the pins to go through so I just you hear it catching right there and eventually it will go smooth okay 
kind of feel it too. It feels like it'll feel really gritty at first and then it'll like smooth out. I'm gonna say that bad boy's done. Pull down the next one. You heard like how gritty it was? Ah! Try not to do that. The sandpaper's been giving me a hard time all day. Yeah, you'll feel it kind of go smooth and maybe you can hear it. So I just kind of do a little something like that. Like these will have to be cleaned off pretty good. Oh, that one's a good one. You hear it? And it just slowly starts getting quieter. So that's what you're trying to do. You're just trying to knock any rough edge off of it. And like I said, I've built differentials without doing either one of these processes and never had an issue because it will send, it will smooth itself out inside your gearbox. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have uh, changed your diff oil. I'm like, man, there's a lot of, a lot of shiny in here. <laughs> so it's, it's going to do it itself, but this just kind of helps, I guess. Let's see if this one's going to be really gritty. Not too bad. Give her a quick turn. All right, just figured I'd show you guys. These little ones are making the magic happen. I'm telling you, like you can hear a big difference in the little gears. So let's pull this guy over here real quick. Maybe it's in my head, but I swear I hear a difference. You know, you can kind of hear it. It's like really coarse, and then it just kind of goes smooth. Give her a couple good extra ones. Slide it off the side to be cleaned. I'm going to say you can definitely hear a difference. I'm just hoping it's actually picking up on camera for you guys. Like I said, your goal is just to knock off that little roughness. Whoo, arm pump setting in near the end. Only six more to go. Whew. Reminds me back of riding dirt bikes right there. Something I should get back into. Oh, the sandpaper's kicking my butt. Usually don't have that much of an issue with these the sandpaper wanting to fold up like that. This one right here is giving me a hard time. Whew. Feeling the burn now, guys. All right, now you can throw all your gears in like, a, this is like a little mason jar. Uh, just throw everything in there and you can just spray them with a little parts cleaner and get all that crud out of the gears, which you don't want that inside your diff oil, so. So once you got them in your jar, you can just pour a little parts cleaner in there. Kind of give them a little swirl around. Get all the crud out of there. And if you don't have any parts cleaner or if you don't want to smell this, which smells pretty pretty rough, soap and water does good too. So just make sure you get all the water off your gears before you start building your differential. Swirl around, maybe just pour some of this out. And leave them in there for a little bit. I'm gonna go one more round. As you guys can imagine, it's pretty strong right now in the uh, around the workbench here. Whew. So make sure you do this in like a decently ventilated area. Yeah, so I'm gonna call that good. We're just gonna go ahead and dump these bad boys out before I mess around and get a freaking headache. Before I mess around and get a headache, I can't even talk now. But yeah, much cleaner. So boom, I said, 
clean these pretty good just because that the aluminum sanding whatever it makes pretty good mess so as you guys can see or maybe you can maybe you can't these bad boys are pretty smooth which is what you want I said you can still see the little casting circles and you're not trying to go crazy but you can't you can barely see them on this one so definitely try to sand them evenly as possible but you won't feel if you rub your finger over it you won't feel any like snags or anything that's what you're trying to get rid of and if you have one that hasn't been sanded if you do it it's not like a snag but you'll feel that it's uneven so that's all we're doing guys just trying to even stuff out to make breaking in the differential you know that much more easier so as you run the car it will all this stuff will break in yeah like i said you don't have to like kill your brain cells and use parts cleaner you can just use you know dish soap which is usually what i prefer to do just because uh it's cheaper <laughs> part clean, break clean part clean that stuff's kind of expensive but i built this out of like an old tupperware thing put a couple of holes in it with your body reamer and you can put the part in there uh spray a little soap on it or just put a little soap on it rub the you know rub the parts together and then just spray some water over it shake it up stuff like that this works good too so you don't have to use spray cleaner you can just spray your favorite cleaner on there like simple green or anything so just trying to get all that crud and sanding material off there and as far as the casings i just wipe them out i don't think you know they get that dirty so i just wipe them out with a microfiber towel so yeah because i don't go crazy cleaning i have my moments to where i will but i just don't see the benefit of it so all right so let's start assembling everything now finally <laughs> it's a, it was it's a lot of work to do this but it, i think it's worth it i really do so all right i went and found my uh little head mount so i'm hoping this is going to give a better view for you guys if not i'll do another one separate on the ground just in case now somewhere in all this mess yes i have some grease like i've tried a lot of different things as far as like building your shocks and your diff o-rings and stuff um, i just use what kyosho gives us so i've tried using silicone oil and all other kind of stuff um, i don't really have any pros and cons about any of it i just use this because it's here seems to work extremely well so now that we have these guys already good to go we'll set our towel of that thing it this microfiber towel reeks Whew. went a little little extra on the uh the oil or the cleaner and I like to go ahead and set these guys out separate. Um, just go ahead and set them out like rear, center. Because if you've ever put these in wrong before, it's kind of a headache. And if you don't know, the center differential is just the out drives are just flat like this. You can kind of see the difference in them. So, yeah. I've been in a hurry before not pay attention and actually use this, you know, put like one of these in the center diff. So you got to take... The seal back out and it can be a bit of a headache and if you get really unlucky and go too far you are i don't know why i'm taking that apart though i don't need it right now you get into having to dump the oil out and all kind of stuff so talking and making little stupid mistakes yeah i go ahead and get the shocks out i like to build them after i build my differentials just because i hate messing with the silicone oil so i just like to go ahead and get it knocked out so Get all your diff O-rings out. Grab all of them. Now I'm gonna do something that I've never done before, but I'm gonna try it on this car. So guys will see that in just a second. But I just like to go ahead and get everything in a position to where it's easy to receive the O-ring. Just like that, just get everything facing up. So I said, I hope you guys can see this. And just get a little bit of grease on my finger. And then I just like massage it into all the O-rings. You can do this in a bag and stuff, but eh. Just make sure you wash your hands in between all this stuff. That way you're not like massaging, you know, sanded aluminum bits in there. Just like that. Just rub a little oil on them. Just drop one down there. Drop one down there. 
drop one down there. And you just kind of sit one down there, sit one in there, wipe off your hands. And then just take your finger and set the o-ring in place. Just go, I like to build them like all at the same time. That way you're not skipping or jumping around doing this and doing that. So just go ahead and put all the o-rings in there. Just push them in there. Push the guy in there. Just like that. And then I like to just take a little bit of grease, not much. And put on the outside of these bad boys. So you can turn them either way, it don't really matter, I don't think. It's a diff pin trying to roll away. I don't put a lot, I just want something there to protect the bearing and stuff. If something does happen and it spins, I guess, I don't know why I do this. And it also helps keep the bearing in place too, so. So it's not like falling off when you're trying to mount everything. Boom, just like that. Let's put all your pins right here. Wipe your hands off. And then just go around and put your bearing on everything. Like I said, I just do every process to each differential. That way it's, like I said, just makes life easy, I guess. Don't force these things on there. Like I said, if they're going on there sideways, take the time to straighten them up. They can be a pain. Usually I'll lay all the stuff out in order, have all the pins in one place, all the bearings in one place, but like I said, I'm in a bit of a hurry and I got stuff everywhere. So just bear with me. Like you take all your gear pins and you can just sit them over here on this microfiber of death. Cause that thing smells awful. All right, get your gaskets out of the way so you don't damage those. Now that you got those all knocked out and you got all your bearings on, got your seals in, just grab one of your out drives. Like I said, just kind of keeping all this stuff laid out in order. You know, front and rear, center, front and rear, center, front and rear, center. Kind of like that. So, yeah, just want to make sure you get a little bit of grease down inside that grease groove. Like I said, I just like to use my fingers because, I don't know, it just makes life easier. And it's really hard to make sure you get grease in there, but just work with it. Try to get a nice fat line of grease on there. And like I said, I just like to go ahead and grease them all before I stab them down in there. That way my hands will be clean. I like to run grease all the way to the edge of it. But the main goal is to get some inside that little channel. Like you want it like a nice little, not just like a little smear, you want it kind of full. So, which it can be difficult to do. I'm not even gonna lie. Feel like I shortchanged that guy a little bit. Don't too much worry about the mess of it like squishing out. You can always go back and clean it up. I would guess it's better to have too much grease than not enough. Because it's easy to wipe off extra, but it's pretty hard to uh, add some once you get it in there. Making a mess of this one. There we go. And you start getting this source all over the place, just wipe it back in there. <laughs> and scrape up a little bit more. Dang it. I hate when I actually touch the out drive and get grease all over it. There we go. Come on. Good enough. I 
I take my finger and just like get grease all over the whole entire out drive and then try to put some in the center like a big fat blob right there kind of like that but not too crazy something like that Yeah, that one went smooth. Now you can take the excess that's on your fingers, just put it on the edge right there. Screw it, get it out of the way. And clean your hand off. Just work your way through them. Kind of want to hold your finger over the O-ring on the inside just so it doesn't push itself out. And kind of give her a little turn as you're going in. Because you don't want to get air trapped behind it because it'll push the O-ring out. And just like that. Go ahead and grab another one. Go ahead and get your gear for that front differential. Turn it so it goes through it and doesn't push the uh, seal out. So, like that little excess grease that smushes out right there, it's not going to hurt anything. If you get like a lot, you can always go through and like I said, clean it off. Once again, hold that O-ring down. Which sometimes in the, the diff case, it can be kind of a headache to hold it down. So, but what you don't want is the O-ring like pushing back out towards you. So, just make sure you hold it in there, you don't get air stuck behind it. Looks pretty good. Move on to the gear. Hold the O-ring down. It's looking pretty good. Usually it doesn't go that smooth because you're pushing air. So usually it wants to push that O-ring out. So just like that, see? That's what you don't want to happen. If that does that, I'll just go ahead and push it back out. Push the o-ring back in and sometimes if you turn it kind of helps just like that so sweet and i forgot to do what i said i was going to do have you ever noticed like your center differential it seems it'll walk like it will you know push one way or the other way so i thought about putting a shim on the center differential to help push it towards the engine or the motor, whichever car you're building. So I think I'm gonna try with this car. So I'm gonna pull this guy back out and I'm gonna take one of these diff shims and just drop it on top of the Baron and push this guy back in there. So my theory of this is that this little shim is going to help push the differential towards the electric motor and it'll stop the differential from walking like this. So I'm going to try this and just see what happens. So I just put a little shim in there. And I've actually done this before. I cut a shim and slid it over. But I don't think I'm going to start doing this from here on out. So, all right. Now we can move on to the pins, which is probably the irritating part. Just kind of slide these bad boys in there. Okay, I hope that angle's a little bit better. Um, like I said, I don't know where I got these things from, but they are just, they're awesome. They come in handy. But just kind of line up with the pin and just slide it into place. Boom. Grab another pin, slide it through there, which you probably don't really have to do. Come on, come on. Maybe you do. 
and then just trying to just line it up with the outdrive. It can be a bit of a headache for sure. Too big. Sometimes I don't really want to go in there, so push. That song is tight in there, that doesn't feel good. Go. Drop the next guy in there. Dang it. Done it to me again. So get lined up. Push her in there. And just go ahead and move on to the gears and everything. Kind of see how that o ring is kind of pushing up some. Just kind of push that down in there. These are like really rounded, they're not sharp or anything, so there's no chance of really damaging the seal or anything. grease on the tip of them is like making it a freaking nightmare. Pins are sticking to it. All right. So now that you got all your got all your gears in there, then now you can grab your tool and these little plugs. Go ahead and plug the case. Um, I've actually forgot to do this one time and started pouring fluid in there, so <laughs> it's going to make for a bad afternoon if you forget it. Alright. And just run it down so it's flush. So. Like I said, if you do all the processes together, just put a pin in all of them and put these in all of them and you will never forget, or you shouldn't forget a step. Good enough, I think. Got another one. Go ahead and throw that in there. A little bit more. All right, this is another little step I do that you don't necessarily have to do it just makes your life a little bit easier this is set up to be the exact depth as the 3 by 12 uh, screw that they want you to put in here so I just made this so it have like a little stopping point and then I grab my electric screwdriver and I go ahead and chase and cut some threads in these house these uh, cases so it's not so you know such a headache to actually get the to get the screws to go in all the way around just go ahead and do all three usually I'll do this before I even do the sanding process which is probably better but I forgot to do it this time <laughs> So you went with like a high and low spot where the threads are being cut in. Ooh. Trying to get away from me.
right, so now I just got that done. Be careful because that screw is pretty warm after you forced it in there like that. Kind of step these guys to the back a little bit, give us a little more room to work with. Your choice of uh, your choice of oil, that's up to you. Um, just to start with, I guess I'm gonna go three, 10, and five. We'll see what that does. I'm actually running out, so I'm gonna have to get some more, some more shock oil and diff oil. I like to put a little bit in the back side of the gear and like try to like work it in there. Cause I really don't want the air to get stuck in the back like that. So not that I don't think a couple little air bubbles is gonna hurt. Yeah, just like to do that. Popping a little air bubbles I may see. And this is the fun part. Just take your diff casing and just kind of push the gear up towards it. Push it and turn it upside down. It should seal it and actually keep the air out of the bag, but who knows. Go ahead and move on to the center one. So we're going to run 10. Just kind of slowly working to keep the air out. I just push the big old air pocket in there. These little ones are kind of a pain to get to. I just kind of work that bad boy in there. All right, so this is honestly probably a little, little dumb overkill. Um, but like I said, as you start building kits and stuff, you just kind of everybody will pick their own little. They'll have their own little things, I guess. This is just something I've done and never stopped doing it. Same thing. You can kind of see a couple of air bubbles, but it'd be okay. I don't know. There we go. Boom. I wonder if I should go 10, 10, and 3. Yeah, we'll stick with the game plan. We'll go. I might not have enough 5. I used to just fill up the the case and then just drop the gear on top of it, but I just think this works a little better to help get all the air out of it behind it. Which is something I wanted to try. I'm not sure if like all the drivers fill their diffs all the way full. I was kind of wanting to try to use like a higher oil, a higher weight oil, and not fill the diff all the way up. I was kind of curious to how that would feel. Might try that one day. Uh oh, uh oh, getting away from me. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start filling the front and the rear. Man, I'm almost out of three too. I want to get some more oil. I like to go ahead and get them like halfway full. I had to take a quick little break because uh, the GoPro died, so. Hoping I have enough battery juice to get us through this. But I went ahead and knocked out those two and I saved one to show you guys. So let's go ahead and put these, put your gears on here. Grab one of these little, little washers. There's like a smooth and rough side. If you can feel it, I always like to put the smooth, the smooth side towards the gear. You can even be OCD and like sand these if you want to, but that's, that's a bit much. It's no big deal if you can't tell which one's the smooth. And like I said, I don't know where I got these little things, but man, they come in handy. So I just put the little bevel facing up. Just you get your washers and your gears on there, grab it with this guy, set it down on there, and you can spread it out. I like to fill them like halfway up with oil. Just, it helps, makes it easier to get the gears in there because they just kind of like fall and float down into the grease, or the oil, not grease. So throw that gear on there. Grab this guy. Basically, you're just repeating the process. 
Throw that one on there. Throw that guy on there. And this time you want to face the little beveled part down. So face it down, move it out. Once again, you can use needle nose pliers or anything like this, but grab this guy. Turn the diff around. And just set it into place. Push your gear out to the edge. Make sure she goes down there. Try to keep oil out of your, your screw holes. All right, grab your other gear. Like I said, either like line it up in between the two screw holes or either just um, with them or something like that. Just make sure you know you can, something easy for you to line your pin up with. Push the guy down in there. Oh, oh, dripping oil everywhere. All right, so this is the front one. So I'll take a little bit of the five and do the same thing. Just fill these little back, little crevices up in the gear. Fill those up. I think I had just enough to finish these, these differentials. So I'll definitely be buying some more oil. I like to sit it off to the side to let all the air come out of it. So usually I like to set them on a surface that's not going to cause them to fall like the bulk is your instruction is not a very good place all right so now that you have now that you have the diffs already filled I like to take a razor blade you can use your finger but I just use a razor blade and just scrape across the differential and then we'll get any extra oil Do it both ways and then you'll have a perfectly tipped off like full to the brim diff and just wipe the, the rim of the housing to get all the, <coughs> the oil off of it and there you go and I take one of these little allen keys that's nicely provided by Kyosho and just dip in the center don't pick the gear up if you can avoid it and just scoop out a little drop like that that will help with the overflow when you push the out drive in there and that's the center like I said try to keep these things in order because you don't want to mix them up all right scrape it and if you're not getting any oil you probably don't have enough in there so like I, said, I don't know if there's any drivers that don't fill their diffs all the way up or not so that's something I want to try Go ahead and wipe the corners. Wipe it on my shirt because I don't care. Bam. Grab a little drop out. All right, once you have your differentials all full, I like to grab a little bit of this grease that Kyosho gives you and just dab a little bit on the uh, the place where the O-ring or the uh, gasket goes, I'm sorry. Just kind of rub it with a Q-tip, it's kind of a pain because it wants to fall apart like that. But go ahead and get all of them. And my reason for doing this, it just makes the uh, the gasket actually, paper gasket, or we're gonna get torn with a drill set on it, just makes the gasket actually stay in place. So you don't have to fight with it. Make sure you line them up pretty good. Set them with their individual their diffs guy in there usually they'll stay in place had like some little uh, air leak carburetor air sealant 
I used to like dab behind these and it would hold them in place for like forever. It worked pretty good, but this works too. Then take it and just line it up how it is on this coming up. That's stupid. Stay down, come on. Because that's what you don't want to happen right there. Because then it's going to fall out and get all over the place when you're trying to trying to close up the differential. So, put a little more grease. Be careful with these O-rings or these gaskets because they, they tear pretty easy. So, stay in place. That's what you want. You don't want it to fall off. Because then when you're trying to line it up, it'll fall off and fall into your oil or whatever. So you want it to kind of stay in place. So line your pin up with your gear. Best you can. Make sure the pin's in the center. The best you can get it. And then flip it upside down and go ahead and... So I'm just going to get over a little bit and line it up. Get it down without as little as wiggling as possible. If you have an oil, you know, smush all over the place, it probably had a little too much oil in there. I don't think it'll hurt anything. Just try not to like force it down inside your screw hole. Make sure the clutch is turned down on your drill. I like to take the screws all the way, not all the way down, but pretty close. Got oil all over my hands. That one went down a little far. <laughs> you like to get them down pretty close. Whew. Don't let the differential spin around and tear your fingers up. Uh, so that's why I like to build my. That's why I like to build my shocks and everything at the same time. Because this oil gets everywhere and it's a nightmare. So once I clean up from it, I don't want to like come back to it later to do my. Uh, shocks so now that you got it full put some pressure on it so it's not leaking out and just hand crank these bad boys barely snug it not even like just close it just get it you know barely, barely snug there we go turn around give this guy a little extra now that you got them all the way down you can hold it by the gear snug it just a little bit a little bit And just kind of keep working your way around. A little extra. Go back. I'm just doing this to make sure you're tightening the gear flush. I probably tightened mine a little too much, but I absolutely hate when these things leak. So that's why I go through the headache to uh, send them. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a leaky differential. So I hate this oil. Then wipe off all the extra. Nice. I'm really curious how that shim's gonna work out. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, but I'll keep you guys updated on it. And you have a perfectly good, smooth differential the thing is butter which is what you want so center diff is done i'm not going to bore you guys with doing the front and rear i'll go ahead and knock them out and then the next video we will cover some shocks but all right guys that's pretty much it like i said i just wanted to share this with you one more time uh give it a shot try it let me know what you think and like i said i'll keep you guys updated on that little shim thing um like i said i've done it before i just cut the shim and slid it over there which is kind of eh. Rather do it that way, that way it doesn't want to fall and like come apart and stuff. Yeah, that's for, that's it for this video. Like I so said, the next video we'll get the shocks done and stuff like that. And I got like a few little tips with building your car or your buggy, whatever. And I'll share with you in the next few videos to come. So, yeah, that's it. I'm going to finish getting this thing knocked out so we can get to the track. And I uh, just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.